It has been more than a decade since Apple merged iPod and a phone into one. Books are compressed into a tablet. We are in a world where there's almost no way we can survive without technology. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against technology. I love the fact that we are living in such an advanced time. But if we slow down and notice, we are not effectively using this text as a tool. Instead, our behaviours are controlled by them. Our happiness depends on it. And to a certain level, we can't live without it. We probably stare at screens longer than the time we face our loved ones. If you are tired of this phone-lit face of ours, then digital minimalism might be the solution. Similar to minimalism, what we want to achieve from digital minimalism is to be mindful with the use of our text and digital tools. Use them intentionally, instead of them taking control over our lives. My minimalism journey has been comfortable. Removing things are pretty much straightforward. However, when it comes to digital clutter, they can be intangible but yet visible. I'm overwhelmed by the mess I've accumulated over the years. They are an eyesore, but yet they can be invisible if I choose to. Often, we just choose to see what we want to see and hide the ugly side. But thanks to the prior knowledge on minimalism, I know that there's no need for me to rush the whole process. So I'll be bringing you along with me on this journey of digital decluttering. I'll call it the mass digital cleanse, baby step by baby step. So today, let us start with something everybody has and is always near us, a phone. A study shows that in 2019, we use an average of 3 hours 30 minutes on our phones. And my average daily use far exceeded the result. And that's the reason why I really need this digital decluttering. But first, let me explain. My girlfriend is not here with me, so these few weeks I have been Skyping with her through phone. But being able to justify doesn't make an excuse better. I still spend a lot of time on social media, Instagram to be exact. So take a look at our screen time report on our phone. In order for us to know how and what can we do to make various changes for the better. So now, let us look into our primary source of digital clutter, apps. We clutter our devices with tools. The fact that they are free makes us keep whatever we might need in the future in our phones, no matter how useful they are. I call them just-in-case apps. I always have this just-in-case mindset at the back of my mind. I wouldn't know when I need them, so I chose to keep them. And that creates a huge issue for me. It doesn't just clutter my phone, it clutters my mind as well. And that deeply affects my productivity. There's a lot of time when I just stare at my home screen. I can't seem to find the app that I want. Maybe it's because I'm messy and disorganized. But the best thing we can do is to declutter useless apps. And how can we define useless? That's when we need to give ourselves a guideline to follow. I use the 90 day rule. If you haven't used it for the past 90 days, this app is probably not essential for me to have on my phone. I find 90 days the perfect spot for me. It's recent but yet long enough for me to identify that this app is not important for me. After filtering with this guideline, we still can dive deeper on these remaining apps. Do they bring us value? Or are they another duplicate? Sometimes, we can't decide what we want. Especially me, I'm very indecisive. I have Apple Maps and Google Maps. I kept both apps with the same function because I can't decide which is a better option. Just pick one and stick with it. Remember, we can always change our choices. One map, one music player, one email. I've also made a separate video where I decluttered 60 useless apps which I thought I might use it in the future, but apparently not. It's exclusively on my Patreon page, so if you're interested, please check it out. Don't be afraid to delete your apps. I know, they are free and we ended up hoarding a lot of them, but it's because they are free, we can always retrieve them back whenever we need it. But of course, do it mindfully. After decluttering unnecessary apps, I'm pretty sure social media apps are still on our phone. I'm not all against the use of social media because it helps me to connect with people across the globe. I can reach out to you guys and communicate with your true messages. However, something with such great power has its dark side. If we are not mindful with the use, social media will become the glue that glues us to our phones. I'm not here to tell everyone to deprive ourselves and ban ourselves from using it. 
But what's crucial here is to find a balance because there's a difference between using it as a tool and being treated as a tool of social media conglomerates. A lot of us have probably found ourselves in a situation where we have a lot of tasks to complete or have to rest, but yet we are stuck in a rabbit hole of mindless scrolling and we fall for this trap because it's easy. A simple act of reading the time on our phone can lead to constant scrolling on Instagram without you being aware. Just with one click and we can see what we want to see. One of the ways I cut down on the use of social media is by adding friction to the use of these apps. I hide it. Try changing the location of the app so our muscle memories wouldn't know where to find it, even if we want to. And during the wait, I start to realize that I just wanted to search for a cheap trail of scrolling. This friction creates a waiting time for us to think, what are we trying to do? It stops our subconscious mind from doing what we are not supposed to. However, a simpler way to stop those distractions is to delete the app. Nothing as straightforward as that. You can always re-download it if you have to, to make a post or treat it as a tool. I've deleted my Instagram for a few days now and I've downloaded it once to make a post to use it as a tool. But I love the feeling of knowing that I don't have to go for a virtual adventure on the explore page just because I'm bored. Next, delete your contacts. It's one of the most satisfying thing to do, removing unwanted contacts from your phone. You might start to notice you probably only need 20% of your contacts. If we aren't close with this particular person, we perhaps wouldn't even communicate via calls or text. And not to mention, I feel that most of this secondary relationship occurs on social media. We wouldn't even need their numbers. And while deleting your contacts, you'll be surprised there are a lot of names you can't remember who they are and start to wonder how they even end up in your contact list. For this, I can't give you an exact rule on how to clean it out because that depends on your relationship with the person. But a rule of thumb for me is, if I don't plan to meet this person again on purpose, I'll probably don't need his or her number in my phone. Next is media. That's an easy one for a lot of us, all thanks to streaming services. There goes the time when we have to download music and video and sync it to our phones. But if you listen to podcasts and downloaded them on your phone automatically, we can delete those podcasts that we have no interest. Of course, unsubscribe to those which doesn't bring you any value. One of the most significant assets on my phone is my photos. There are precious visual aids that can pull back a lot of my memories. They are something I couldn't bear to lose them, so I need to back them up regularly. We wouldn't know when they might be gone. The easiest way is to have cloud storage but I still do the most traditional form of drag and pull them into my computer. I'm a caveman. Additionally, I only have 64 gigs on my phone. Backing them up and clearing it from my phone is the best way to free up some space. And before backing up, it's also essential for us to vet them thoroughly. Delete redundant pocket shots or double chin photos. Remove notifications. I have to say, notification is hands down the biggest distraction they are the visual and audio signals that draw our attention to the phone. Whether is it text, emails, ads, or reminder for you to use more of those apps, remove them. If they are genuinely an emergency, they will come in the form of calls. If you need to check something, you can always use the app. It really depends on what you consider as an essential notification. And of course, it depends on your job scope. I wouldn't want to be responsible for you losing your job but it's also important for us to have a clear separation once it's off work timing. For me, I've stopped all notification except for my productivity apps, Telegram, which is how I communicate with my circle of friends. Notification for text messages are still on, even though they can be one of the most irritating distraction, but it still serves me well with the ease of keying verification code. And recently, I've switched off my email notification on my phone. Emails can be one of the most stressful things to read in the morning and I have limited my use of replying email just on my computer. Remember, we have control over our phones, not the other way around. Lastly, as we have come to the end of decluttering, it's crucial for us to keep them neat and tidy. I'm a messy person. I don't think that's a piece of new news. My phone is untidy as well. So it's important for me to keep them neatly in folders, for me to have easy access. Furthermore, 
remember to be intentional with the apps and information we download and have a regular digital decluttering to keep unwanted clutter away. Finally, after such a long wait, I managed to put myself together to make this video. I might call it baby step, but in fact, it's a massive step for me, especially the part where I remove Instagram off my phone. It might be inconvenient to download when I need to make a post, but it's also because of this friction that stops me from consuming content mindlessly. That also gives such clarity when I use my phone. Just like what Carl Newport said, intentionality is satisfying. Knowing that everything I do on my phone is intentional instead of using it as an addiction, that's fulfilling enough for me to continue my journey of digital minimalism. Other than that, there's something amazing about having a clean phone because it felt like a new phone but with a mindful touch to it. So I hope you enjoyed watching this digital minimalism video because I had so much fun removing all the digital clutter. Maybe you should try it out too. I've uploaded an exclusive video of the apps I've removed from my phone on my Patreon page. I also transferred some of the monthly favourites there, which is the best place for me to share something more personal and private. And your support on Patreon also allows me to create more fun videos like this, so I'm really grateful and appreciate the support. I'll continue to work on my digital minimalism as I progress to computer, email, social media, and even photography and videography files. Like I've said, baby step by baby step. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again next week.